What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Jake Rohde. Welcome to week five of the NFL. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for a big win. Um, I'm actually going to be at the Rams game on Sunday. So I'm going to, I was going to have that game stacked anyway, because it's pretty obvious to. Um, but uh, definitely going to have it stacked. Uh, we'll figure out what to do. There's, you know, we're recording this on Thursday afternoon. There's a lot of injury news. Rohde, how you doing, man? And any overall thoughts before we get into some positions and all that? Yeah, man. Uh, I'm looking. I think we need a big takedown this weekend too, man. I mean, it starts tonight. We got a showdown tonight. You guys catch us live here after, or before, you're gonna shoot. I screwed it all up. Now your video is gonna post on Friday, so hopefully, I already have this big showdown win going into the weekend. Um, usually, we film during the game, so it really throws everybody off. But um, <clears throat> this is before the game today, so uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good, uh, good one this weekend. There's some good games to target. Uh, that's probably going to be a really good game to go to, Bobby. So that, that's going to be a fun one of the Rams and Eagles there. Yeah, it should be fun. <laughs> Looking forward to the whole weekend. Um, I've got my, uh, I've got them going to the Dodger game. As long as I'm not getting sick. I'm um, going to the Dodger game on Monday, a playoff game. So that'll be fun. Uh, so back-to-back, pretty, pretty cool sporting experiences. Uh, shout out to DraftKings for those. So uh, with that said, Rody, let's jump into it. Let's let's pull your, pull, pull your screen up or we pull mine up. Which one do you want to do? Um, we can just do mine. Okay, let's grab yours, and then we'll go uh, position by position here. It's a different type of week for me, I just just to throw in a few things, because I usually – I've been trying to, to narrow down my player pool, and for a while on Sunday, man, I really thought I was going to be doing really well because, you know, that, that I had that Bills-Miami game. Literally, I didn't have, like, no – I had, like, guys from that game every single place, and it was just looking perfect, and then it just sort of uh, – the, the Miami couldn't convert a fourth down or a third down to, in the second half, and that was it. But uh, but this week, I don't think we have the obvious game stack, so I'm probably going to be a little bit more trying to avoid some of the chalky things. Right now at quarterback, uh, Hertz is going to be the most popular. Uh, I have no problem just going on the other side of that game and playing Stafford. I'll probably have a similar amount of both. Uh, I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna be overweight Miami again, um, and I'll, I'll play. I'll play a good percentage of, of Tua, probably just below the Hertz and Stafford category for me. And then we have like Mahomes and Richardson, which I think both of those make sense. But the other guys I'm using are a little funky. Uh, I'm gonna play Josh Dobbs this week, uh, probably at least at least around ten percent at, at the point at this point. I'm probably gonna play like two percent Zach Wilson, but I right now have ten percent of them. And then Ryan Tannehill is the other cheapie, just because it allowed me to double spend up in some spots that I really liked and I could get different while getting the best receivers. But Hertz, Hertz and Stafford being my favorites, I do like the the the, the Dobbs to uh, Mahomes, Richardson are going to be the next ones for me. And I know the Dobbs ones might be a little bit of a reach. We'll see how I feel about that, uh, that one on Sunday. But I like the idea of getting a little different with builds when you're going to have more concentrated ownership. Well, well not a quarterback, you're going to have – Pretty concentrated ownership on certain individual positions, so I was trying to avoid it, and that's what I've ended up with. I also will probably throw in a little Daniel Jones. What, what are you looking at for at quarterback, and uh, what's standing out to you? Maybe you can throw in some game stacks if you want to. Yeah, I see that uh, you did mention uh, mention Daniel Jones. He was one guy kind of higher up on the list as a cheaper guy. I mean, just really, really with him, it's hard to pair it with. I mean, I really like Darren Waller to pair with him, but. I mean, I really look at these guys in my stack. So when I mention teams, it's like, hey, I'm stacking Waller. But, you know, you want to get some of that Miami game. You know, Tua, Tua's been on fire. He's been taking things down. The Miami guys have been winning us a lot, a lot of people money. you got to kind of play that, you know. Um, also, Detroit has a high total. I know we didn't say Jared Goff, but his price is pretty reasonable. And we seen last week that some of these blowout games were actually kind of closer than we thought. So, mm -hmm. like, don't – these totals sometimes are a little bit big, but – that doesn't mean that the team that scores 27 doesn't have a, a fantasy winner in your lineup. So try to get some of those guys in the lineup. I like that. I like that Rams Eagles game a little bit. Um, uh, Mahomes is on the slate, that Vikings game. That's going to be a top, top cousins and Mahomes is going to be a popular game stack for me this week. I think cousins is the cheaper side with Justin Jefferson there. I think that's going to play out nice, and then but you just you run it back with Kelsey, but that's a very expensive stack. So right. you know, I really like these cheap quarterbacks that Bobby mentioned and everything as well. So yeah, those guys are going to make things work, and and you can play these cheap quarterbacks like Tannehill at four nine, and you can still get Jeffersons and Kelsey correlations in there with your lineup. So mm -hmm. uh, it might make sense this week to get some of these cheaper quarterbacks. And then you'll want to pair with some of these stud players that we want in these other games when we get to position by position. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and I agree with it. Like, that's the reason to play like a Dobbs to, to, to Michael Wilson at 3,700, who had 25 fantasy points last week. You play that, you, so you can run it back with Mixon and then you can play a really cheap, you know, I mean, if you can play the really, you can play the Kelsey with Jefferson on one side, or you can, you could, you know, if Saquon's available, you could play Saquon with Tyreek Hill. You could really do a lot of things if you save some money in a couple of those spots. Um, speaking of which, I do think this is going to be the contrarian thing is going to be to, to spend up at running back this week. Um, there's not that much to spend up on for one thing, but just, just, just thought I'd point it out. Saquon, if he does play, he even still will have very lim- limited ownership in my opinion. I think Bijan Robinson is the only one who really gets significantly owned. And I don't think anyone's going to play Derrick Henry, who, as you all saw last week, still has, you know, still has it in on me through the touchdown pass. He's the most accurate pat touchdown passer in the history of football. I think he's got four touchdowns in like six dropbacks. Or sorry, six, four touchdowns in like six, six attempts in his life. Um, pretty wild. But uh, anyway, to running back for, for for my ownership right now, it's going to change obviously. But I'm I, I'm high on Kyron Williams uh, in the obvious game. The interesting thing is probably what to do with the Miami thing. Um, everyone's going to zig to what I or zag to what I zagged to last week, which was playing A-Chain. Now A-Chain is projected to be the highest owned running back. Uh, I think it's an interesting spot to, to jump back to Mostert, actually. Um, so I actually like the idea of getting exposure to both those guys, but probably be a little below the field on A-Chain just because that ownership's starting to steamroll. I might even be below the field on Joe Mixon as well, just because there are other guys in this range just so much lower owned that, that I like, um, although Mixon does fit into my little Arizona-Cincinnati stack. Uh, Alvin Kamara is looking like he's going to be pretty popular, a tough matchup against New England. I'm okay with it. Not like crazy about it. I like David Montgomery. They, you know, I think as the year goes on, you're going to see Gibbs with more touches and Gibbs even had nine carries last week, but they really pounded the hell out of Montgomery. This should be a game they could get away with. I like both Montgomery and Gibbs. Um, I will probably, I will have more Montgomery, obviously. Um, but the other guys that, you know, the other guys I'm like near, like I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to be overweight Brees Hall. I'm going to be overweight Derrick Henry. I'm going to be way overweight DeAndre Swift. Um, those are the main ones for me that are getting different. Other than that, it's this typical Kyron Williams, Montgomery, Mixon. Um, but I, I'm probably going to shift more to Mostert than A-Chain. And uh, I'm trying to get a little different by spending up for Derrick Henry. Those are my main differentiators. Well, dang, Bobby, you uh, you, you stole well, Rob, the show. Well, I, what I'm doing, what I, said, I said what I was doing, so it, it's, it, sorry if I don't leave you enough. I'll leave no, you No, no, it's fine. I mean, man, he stole the show. He had some good picks right there, guys. I mean, definitely he's on he's on pace for or on on the plays for the, the running back situation. I like exactly what he said this week. He did say he was even going to be overweight on Bre- Bre- Brees Hall. I thought that might be the guy that was going to get to talk about. Um, he's supposed to get more workload. He, he he's you know getting a little bit more flash here. Denver sucks in my opinion. Yep. Obviously they got scorched this year so far. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I think I think that he's a good play. Um, you know Gibbs is another guy that I'm waiting to see. I've been playing this guy too, and you know Montgomery keeps stealing the show. I had Montgomery captain when he went off the other night, the, so that saved me a little bit. I had a nice night there. Um, when he had all those touchdowns, but man, Gibbs, I feel like he's gonna nuke one of these days. And his under one percent ownership here, some, you know, eventually, you know, he's gonna explode with a bunch of catches. And um, Bobby talked to Alvin Kamara too last week. We were on him, and I, I liked him last week. I had a bunch of him last week. I just didn't have him paired with the right stacks, unfortunately. But man, he got a lot of targets. So yeah, New England's got a decent defense all the time, but he's gonna get a lot of dump off uh, passes and. He he caught a lot of balls last week, so look for him to be utilized as a two way three down back. You know, so he, he's getting a lot of looks, and definitely like the David Montgomery call. A lot a lot of good plays in here. I love the Moster call over at a-, a Chan. I tell you what, A Chan was a call out on one of my best ball videos. If you guys watch the True DFS uh, best sick. ball yeah. series that I did, A Chan was big in a few of those videos. So I, I'm very heavy in him and best ball. So he's helping those shares out for sure. Um. So trying to think of a guy that we didn't get to any any guys here, you know Miles Sanders versus Detroit. You know we've been I've been on this guy a lot this year. Damian Pierce, these are two cheap guys I've been liking all year. I mean they're okay plays I'd say, but I like these other plays a lot better. You know Kyron Williams, I wish I would have went more on him. I had a ton of him last week at six K. I just felt like he was a great play last week, and I think he's gonna be a good play again this week. He's not too highly owned. Um, but yeah, I think I think I'm on the same pace with everybody in the running backs that Bobby mentioned and 
I don't have too much to add here. I was just trying to see if I had a different guy that I wanted to add, but I mean, pretty much spot on with those running backs I'm going to be playing this week. Yeah, no one getting more work than Williams. I plan on being well overweight until I see any sign of that slowing down. This is not the week for that for me. All right, so we talk about wide receivers here. I'll, I'll mention my my core guys that I put up there, and, and, I, and I do think it's a good core to have. Um, you get the spend down with Wondell Robinson, who's looking like he's going to be really popular. I don't know how much of him I end up playing because of the ownership, and it's taking a giant receiver, which just feels like psychotic. You don't even want to do it in showdown slate, so it feels kind of weird to do on a big slate. Um, but he, uh, Puka was, look again, I, as of right now, I think Cooper Cup is going to play. Um, so that's going to change everything. <laughs> so, But I, I'm leaving Nakua until I get official word. The, the most obvious guy who's going to be just crazy chalk is Jamar Chase. I think one thing you can do to get a little bit different instead of playing Jamar Chase is to play some Tyler Boyd. Um, you know, with 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 Higgins, without uh, assuming that that Higgins is out, let's just pretend. First of all, it's a good matchup for Chase anyway. If Higgins is out, Tyler Boyd should be a, a big beneficiary. He's a he's a guy you could spend down on. Um, but I'm looking at my ownerships right now, and the guys who I'm most overweight on are uh, some. So it's going to be popular. I'm probably going to switch him to a core play by the end of the week. DeAndre Hopkins, um, Josh Downs. I, I'm going to play this kid not just in indie stacks. I think there's enough upside for him in a, you know, you've got the pass funnel defense on the other side in Tennessee. And I think that Josh Downs at 3,700 is a really interesting pivot off of Wondell Robinson. Uh, I love Devontae Smith. He's my preferred of the two, but I will have some A.J. Brown as well. I like Michael Wilson as a spend down a lot. 3,700 coming off the best game of his young career. And People could say, oh, they're because they're, they're coming back. And, well, they're always coming back. This is Arizona. This is, you know what I mean? Like, we're, we're going to get some work out of these guys. So so those being the other ones, along with Calvin Austin that, that, that from the cheap side that, that stand out to me. But the guys I'm most overweight are, are the Hopkins, uh, Devontae Smith, Downs, and uh, probably Michael Wilson, actually. How about you? Yeah, man, you can really make it. I didn't realize Rondell Moore's 3,200 and Michael Wilson 3,700. That Arizona stack's real cheap. Yeah, yeah, that's just Chase. Kind of, wow. And and Marquise Brown's only 5K. Like, I mean, yeah, I forgot about Brown. I mean, you know, one of those guys is doing something. You know, I I, I always like Rondell Moore. He gets a little like jet sweeps and stuff action, a little run. But, you know, obviously Arizona's in the kind of dumpster right now until they, but they're, they're, you know, Michael Wilson just had a huge game. So, like, one of these guys is going to do good. They're going to always be playing catch up, like Bobby said. Someone's going to be getting pass work. They're going to be chucking it a lot. So, you got to look to get one of these guys in your lineup, probably, and, and they pair well against the Bengals. And the Bengals haven't done nothing that great this year either. So, I mean, that might be a game that you know, like it's a decent, decent game environment, I think. So, um, besides that, you know, um, other guys that I'm on, you know, maybe Waddle has a game one of these days. I mean, I've been chasing him all season. I feel like I play him over Hill, and Hill keeps burning me. At this mm-hmm. ownership, I think he's got a lead upside. At 7,500. I like that call. Yeah. I like that. Um, I've been playing a lot of Michael Thomas. He's dry, his price is going down. Um, he gets a lot of catches. I, I still feel like he's got 25 point upside. He had a couple good games to start the year. He didn't get in the end zone yet. He just got to get in the end zone. I think he can have a big game. I know Chris Olive, Olive is there, but um, which he's low owned in that game too. So I, I like taking shots at some of these lower owned players. At receiver, but I'm also stacking. So the teams I'm stacking, I, I'm gonna have. I usually sometimes stack two receivers, um, a, a run back or three. I do a three-two stack with quarterback, two receivers, and a running mm-hmm. back, receiver, run back. So I do a lot of those stacks too. So like I like the Eagles, obviously Devonte Smith over AJ Brown. I do a lot more. I know Brown had a big game last game. He's gonna be owned more. So look at the ownership differences. So mm-hmm. I like Any to target. Them? I like to target these second guys. I like to target Tyler Boyd's the second. If Higgins is out, he'll be the second guy. You know, Waddle over over Hill, Devontae Smith over Brown. You know, I've been on Pittman a little bit this year. His price has stayed about the same, you know, but I like Josh Downs too. So I'm getting a little bit of mix of these stacks that I'm putting them in my stacks or I'm I'm building secondary correlations uh, similar to them, you know, like Derrick Henry and then run it back with Pittman. Derrick Henry run it back with Downs that we talked about. You know that, um, so some of these cheap guys, but we might have a lot of cheap guys this week that we want. You know, I mean, we don't have any Chargers to talk about this week, right? We don't have any Packers to talk about, right? 
So I'm kind of yeah. I'm kind of like the worthless guy. I got, I got my Cardinal shirt on though. <laughs> <laughs> I love I bought this when I was there at the stadium, and it's like one of my favorite sweatshirts. So you see it in videos all the time. I wear it all the time. It's like so comfortable. I'm down in my basement where it's cold, so I just always throw it on and I do videos with it. So that's kind of why I wear it all the time. Well, let's take it as an omen then, and uh, and and maybe play some of these Cardinals that like. I, I think I'm gonna have to, and I I, I started right out with the Cardinals. I think that might be my, you know, bold little take or my mini hot take of a lower own total here. They're at 21. I, I target those 2021 20, totals as a team that might go over a little bit. I, I was wrong last week. You know, I don't, you know, but the week before that I had it right. But last week I was a little off on my over and under by far. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's week five. So we're here again. That might be the Cardinals might be that this might be a game. The Bengals need to do something. They're falling yeah, behind. <laughs> They don't look good. They're not good. So maybe everyone's off them now. You got to think of that. Maybe more people are off them. Chase is going to be higher owned. Boyd, probably higher owned. But maybe switch the Cardinals and run it back with some mixing or one of those guys, and and they're they're in the winning lineup. So mm-hmm. kind of what I'm doing. And then you you always wait one more thing. You always got you know Puka's been hot, but he's priced up now. I um, mean, we don't know about Cooper Cup, which well that's going to be real interesting when Cooper Cup comes back. You know, and the Rams got those two guys going at it. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big Cup fan too because I got him in a lot of dynasty leagues and stuff. But that's going to be interesting to watch how that plays out. Yeah. Um. Yeah. One more Patriots. thing, I think. Um. One more thing, I I'm on St. Brown. You know the Detroit game, looking a little bit lower owned. It feels like, but remember they got a high total, so someone's got to score some points somewhere. So some of those guys are a little bit lower owned. You know, um. Maybe we'll get to a tight end that's a little bit higher owned here next. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of different guys. I like some of the names you mentioned. I also forgot to mention Pickens and Thielen at 52 and 5,100 that are interesting upside plays. All right, um, tight end, though, for me, I actually only have six tight ends that I'm currently playing, and I'm willing to change that. But tight end has, has, has been sort of weird this year. It's, uh, Travis Kelsey is my highest dumb tight end. Shocker there. When you can win the position by so many points, it's hard not to have some temptation to want to do so. Um, and then I want to spend down, and the guys I'm spending down from are, are, are Higby and Goddard, both in the same game. I like both of them quite a bit. Uh, Durham Smythe, I'm going to take another shot at 3K, and then you get to the more chalky Zach Ertz and the less chalky Aconquo. Those That sort of rounds out my tight end pool, and I'm not sure that I'm going to mess with it all that much. That's really all I have, and I do have Kelsey, Higby, and Goddard in like between those three, like 70% of my lineups, and I might just stick with it. What yeah. you got yeah, um, that's a good tight end pool. I must be missing some tight ends. There's a lot here that are not projected. Maybe they're just not projected. Yeah, we're not getting a projection for some of these guys. Um, yeah, that's uh that's a pretty good list of tight ends. Um I feel like I'm missing one. Did I miss uh is Lepre- I said Kelsey Higby, Lepre- Goddard, Smythe, Ertz, Conquo. But I, you could throw Michael Pitt. You could I'm sure you could throw uh, Kyle Pitts into the mix too. Is Laporta out this week? Laporta should be in, but he's expensive. Five K. I mean, for a guy who's basically been three K and hasn't outproduced. No, I I agree. I agree. You know, he did have a big game in twenty two and eleven and eight and nine. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's almost double digits in all the games. Pretty close, but yeah. one big game. Uh, he's not even showing up here unless I can't see. I like I, I like the idea of it. Just so you know. Uh, I think I think that when he, I think he's projected uh, Goldie doesn't have him, has have his ownership up there right now probably just a early week thing yeah but it's an early yeah I'm seeing elsewhere like five percent yeah I just it's just a different guy that I like your list obviously it's just one of the guys that's in that higher total game mm-hmm. no one's playing because it's supposed to be a blowout but someone's got to score two or three touchdowns in that game and there's no reason he couldn't have the two touchdowns um, he's been getting targeted. From golf, quite a bit though. I mean, he he's had you know five targets, six targets, five targets, eleven targets for a five K guy. I mean, that's okay in my opinion. Yeah, so that's pretty fair. Um, you know, I mean, Boyd Boyd's been getting targets too, but he's cheaper for forty five hundred. Just an example of another player. But um, you know, like I love your list. You know, Smite's the guy we've been chasing a lot. He's you know he's in, and they've been scoring a lot of points. He's just not getting in the end zone. Um. Mm-hmm. You know, and Goddard is another one of my favorites at 4,200. I feel like this is a steal. I was very high on this guy coming in the season. There's a lot of mouse to feed for the Eagles, but he is a big red zone threat. He, he he does look good out there. He's getting a lot of looks from Hurts. So 
That's another player I like. And then Darren Waller, his usage is real high too with with uh, Daniel Jones. I think he he had a bad game last game, but he's been getting a lot of work, um, a lot of looks, and he's really the you know getting getting ran plays for. So I really like him. I like the Higby call. I like the Kelsey call as always. You know, if you can play some of these cheap guys in your lineup, you'll be able to get the Kelsey's um, in that game. Even even some Hawkinson is fine. He's a little bit lower owned too. And then, mm-hmm. you know, Casey has gave up some stuff to tight ends in the past a little bit over the middle. Hawkinson does have those big games occasionally. Um, he's been sitting at that 6500 price tag around there. So it's, it's a little bit hard to eat his price versus Kelsey, I understand. But I like to mix up my tight ends because obviously you see some of these – 3K guys have been scoring two touchdowns. You know, Hurst had a big week once, and, you know, you know, Ertz had a huge catch week, but he didn't get in the end zone. You know, some of these 3K guys back in the, have been having some big games, so maybe Smice the guy this week at 3K, you know, and then Goddard at 4,200. I really like him. I have a lot of Goddard this week as well. I, I like that game environment that he's playing in as well. Yeah, uh, I hear you there. And, and there's other guys, who, you know, that I think are worth, doing, you know, taking some stabs at and, you mentioned some of them, but I, you know, I just throw out the guys I didn't have yet: uh, Tyler Conklin, Kyle Pitts. I'm going to probably take some some weird shots on. Uh, and then it's you know we have a lot of question marks. All the all the backup receivers are questionable for like Barrios and Craycraft is probably out, but Barrios is questionable. That could open things up again more for Smythe. That's what I was thinking, but also it might open. We didn't talk about Robbie Chosen, formerly Robbie Robbie Anderson, but he might actually be, have a real role in a real NFL game that's not. A fifty point spread by the time he gets in, so um, I, we might have to actually have the Robbie conversation, Robbie Anderson or Robbie Chosen now conversation. Um, all right, moving over to defenses, I I do have a clear cut like by far and away number one. I don't even think it's that close when you factor price and everything for me. Even though I like this game stack, so it's a little weird. Uh, the Titans are my number one, and I think that's going to be pretty popular. I think that's going to be the the chalkiest one. I know that. You know, there's certain unless there's certain things I don't usually play the chalkiest defenses uh, because of the the lack of other value. I'm open to still being well overweight the Titans. Um, my other favorites, if you can spend up, would be the Saints. I like the Dolphins. I can't believe I'm going to play some Broncos, but I am, and I'm going to play some Giants. The other the the ones that are just you know just I'm deciding between Arizona against Cincinnati. Pittsburgh against Baltimore. Those are the other two cheap-ish ones I can look at. But I, I'm going to play. I'm playing the Giants because they're 2K flat. I'm playing the Titans because they're 2,400. And I might even throw a Carolina in there at 2,200 just because I am looking to send, save on, on defenses this week. But right now I have a whopping like 60% of the Titans defense. That's not going to be the case by Sunday, but I probably will have like 30%. Wow. About- That's a hell of a list. I really like it. <laughs> Sorry, I thought man. you were gonna, I th- for a minute there. I thought you were going to leave the Giants for me, but uh, it's our first two K flat D of the year so far. It took week five, right? Yeah, finally, we finally got one. We finally got one. You know, the, the, we always play these two K defenses. They are going up a team that's been scoring some points though, but that doesn't mean we can't have a turnover. We had that Panthers last week. We were very heavy on the Panthers. They had that pick six early. You know, they end up holding out about thirteen points. You know, the Chargers. The Chargers really pissed me off because they had a pick six from the end zone. They could have took all the way back. That defense would have had twenty one plus. They right. stuck at fourteen because they they took a they took a slide when they were only up by seven, and then the the three minutes ago, like they didn't realize they should have just scored, and went up fourteen. But I, I don't know. But that, that's a coaching issue. The <laughs> Chargers just keep screwing around. I don't know. They're not on the slate this week. The Titans are one of my favorites at twenty four hundred. Um, that's probably going to be my favorite 20 because I really like, you know, that, that price range Panthers are 2,200. Their defense we played last week, cheap that we liked. giants at two K I'm definitely going to mix and match it this week. We do have a few of these cheaper defenses that I don't mind, but the Titans feel like the strongest D on the, on the slate. They are going to have some ownership. Obviously you can see that here. Um, you know, the Steelers are getting a little bit of ownership here too. You know, they've been, they've been playing really, really well on defense, holding teams down, you know, you, Lamar will fumble at 2,700. It's not, you know, totally out of the world. And then if you're going to do some spend-ups, Saints at 3K is not bad as well. And then uh, I think you mentioned the Dolphins at 3,600 here as well. So those are some projected to be the top D, but I really like the cheap ones this week. Yep. Um, I'm with you. Um 
All right. So, you know, I was thinking about it, what I could do. And so I, I've got a couple, I, and I'm going to do this every week. I mean, I, you don't have to say anything crazy or anything, but I'm going to say my favorite, like, takes to win the slate kind of a thing. Uh, I think Josh Downs or Michael Pittman will be on the millionaire winner. I, I know I'm hedging a little bit, but I like, it just tells you I like the knee passing game a little bit this week. And my other one is I did post all my bets, but I think this is a week for the overs. And I, uh, the game that, that we sort of keep mentioning, messing around with, I'm going to say that Arizona has at least one player on the millionaire winner this week. So one of Downs and Pittman and one guy from Arizona. And again, that's a, you know, the, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, but that, that, that's where I'm at right now. I want to get, I want to get a little creative and it's hard to know on Thursday because we have so many guys. We don't, we don't know John T- Jonathan Taylor's going to play this week. You know what I mean? Like we don't know who's playing yet. So that's, that's what I've got for right now though. Arizona, one Arizona uh, position player and one, uh, one of the uh, downs or Pittman. I, uh, I like that uh, um, a lot. So I, I took notes. I wrote both those down. I think I'm going to add to it this week. I'm going to say that uh, I, I kind of like Brees Hall at, um, okay. what is it, 5,400 here? What was his price here? 5,400. Yeah, yep, I was right. 5,400 Brees Hall against Denver this week. I think he's my player. You know, Bobby forces me to pick a player, guys. He really does. He really <laughs> wants me to pick a player. So I, I had to come up with a guy. I was been thinking about it for the last few minutes here and what I'm gonna do running back or what I'm gonna do. He did receiver, so I ended up going with running back. I'm gonna say Brees Hall is on the Millie Maker winning lineup at fifty four hundred. I really like his upside. He's gonna get a couple of touchdowns this week. Um I think I like that. And I, I definitely wanna also go back to one other thing. Last week I talked some cheap quarterback or two weeks ago I talked cheap quarterbacks. Last week there was a few, but we talked some of the more expensive quarterbacks that we were on. But this week might be a week that these cheap quarterbacks emerge where you can get some of these other expensive players in, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. So where we can play Kelsey and Justin Jefferson, Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, um, Amon St. Brown, some of the studs that are getting all the volume in these bigger total games, Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown. So, like, Think about these cheap quarterbacks, and maybe we go back to Arizona with that cheap stack. One of these cheap stacks, I think, will be be up there in a in a bigger total than it, than it is this week. So I'm taking the cheap stack and Brees Hall. There you go. Love it. I, I love it. That's that's pretty. Look, if, if we can somehow find a thing that sort of gives us the room to play wherever else we want. If we have the Arizona guys, let's say Josh Downs, Brees Hall, something like that, we 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 could we could spend up for wherever we want. It's, yeah, it's, we really there. With what you just said there, there's a lot of options you can do with that with spend up. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm into it, man. Well, I'm looking forward. It's only a ten gamer this week. Um, I'm looking forward to being at the game and hopefully winning my first uh, million in a tournament at, at while I'm at the uh, at the game on Sunday would be my goal. <laughs> That'd be a hell of a sweat at the game. Yeah, that'd be amazing. And so far, we, we have trouble getting reception in there. But all right, Rody, why don't you uh, say anything else and then take us out of here? Uh, yeah, guys, hope you have a good week. Don't forget, check out the packages, like, subscribe. I know this video is free, but make sure you hit the like button because we need your guys' likes. Help us out. Check out the pages we got. We got Discord premium content every day. You guys want to get in on all that stuff, so make sure you do. And as always, let's get it.